A clipper system across Iowa into the Ohio Valley brings in the Arctic air that will set the stage for a major winter storm this coming weekend. We have the latest details next at the Weather Farm. Welcome to the Weather Farm. I'm meteorologist Christopher Hale. Happy New Year. And we have a lot to talk about, especially with an upcoming winter storm set to impact the Ohio Valley and parts of the southeast this coming weekend. So let's jump right into the details. We're first going to take a look at our weather map for our Thursday morning. We have snow across parts of Colorado to near Yellowstone into Idaho. That's light amounts. We have the beginnings of the system that's going to make its way on shore onto Friday, beginning to impact the west coast. We do have a clipper system making its way out of Iowa. It's going to move through Illinois and Indiana on our Thursday into our Friday, bringing light snow before it makes its way to the Appalachian coast. We have a departing low pressure system near Nova Scotia that brought rain to the northeast for the New Year's Day. That's bringing snow amounts to parts of Quebec and Ontario and to Newfoundland uh, on our Thursday. That low will retrograde. It retrogrades a little bit on our Friday and brings snow back towards Hudson Bay. This will continue to sit and spin as we have an area of high pressure near Greenland that's kind of blocking any forward momentum of that low pressure system from making its way to the east. That clipper system has moved towards West Virginia, bringing snow to the mountainous regions. And we have the, the system that will bring significant snow to the Ohio Valley and storms to the southeast. It is now making its way on shore Friday morning. We're going to have snow in those higher elevations, but if you notice the 500 millibar contour lines, these, when they're red, that means temperatures at the 500 millibar level are above zero degrees Celsius. So we're going to have warm air. So those snow levels may rise to about three or 4,000 feet in some locations. Um, so we're going to have to watch that for the amount of snow. But the thing that this clipper system is doing is going to bring in a northwesterly flow of, of winds across the plains into the Ohio Valley, bringing much colder temperatures as we make our way into our Friday, into our Saturday. In terms of snowfall, we're going to see the highest amounts across Iowa. Generally, one to three inches of snow will be likely. As we make our way towards the northeast in parts of Pennsylvania and New York, those areas that are favored with the lake effect snow, you will see those heavier snow amounts across parts of Ontario and Quebec. Uh, 18 to 24 inches of snow is likely as that low continues to spin. And again, in those higher elevations out west, we will see snowfall of 12 to 18 inches uh, by the time we get to Friday afternoon. That clipper system is going to spread one to two inches and in isolated three to four inch amounts across parts of Iowa. As it makes its way across Illinois and Indiana, the thing about clipper systems is they move very quickly and they have very limited moisture available with them. So we're going to see at best a coating to a dusting, enough maybe to coat in those grassier areas. But along I-74 and I-70, this particular model wants to lay down the possibility of a one-inch snowfall. In terms of liquid precipitation, most of what falls over the eastern two-thirds of the United States is going to be in the form of snowfall, except along the coast out west, where we see those uh, yellows, that's two to four inches of rain. Those oranges are going to be higher amounts, four inches plus, by the time we get to Saturday afternoon. So let's put all of our maps into motion. We see that clipper system making its way into Iowa, moving east. We see the, our weekend weather system making its way on shore, bringing heavy rain mountain snows. We see a low pressure develop in the Idaho by the time we get to Saturday morning. That dives down through Wyoming into Colorado. Starts to spread ice and snow across parts of Kansas as that low makes its way across Oklahoma to Kansas. It's going to spread snow, rain, and ice out ahead of it. And then we're going to have along the southeast thunderstorms. But on the north side, we're going to have heavy snow across parts of central Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Snowfall rates could be one to two inches per hour in isolated areas. As I mentioned, that clipper system, we're going to see warm temperatures or seasonal temperatures on our Thursday, but that clipper system is going to help bring in colder air into the Ohio Valley and to the plains for Friday into Saturday. 
we're going to have sub-zero temperatures, 15 to 20 degrees below zero across the Dakotas and Minnesota. Teens are going to spread as far south as Lexington, Kentucky for our Saturday. And then as that system makes its way across uh, the south on our Sunday, bringing snow to the north and heavy rain to the south, we're going to watch to see uh, the temperatures, how they impact with the type of precipitation that will fall. But on the back side, we see another reinforcing shot of cold air as we get into our Monday and Tuesday with potentially sub-zero temperatures across parts of Illinois and Indiana. One thing that I am worried about and concerned about is the temperature gradient with this particular system. At Sunday at 7 p.m., we see a nose of warm air across parts of Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama, where we have temperatures in the 50s and 60s. We're projecting a temperature of 56 in Nashville, 35 in Evansville, 24 in St. Louis, and we have low teens not that far away. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to have a sharp temperature gradient over a short amount of area. This is going to lead to a tightening of pressure, uh, and we're going to have a high wind event across parts of Illinois and Missouri for our Sunday. But how far north this nose of warm air moves will have a great impact of what type of precipitation we see. This wants to take the warm temperatures up to the Ohio River. So Evansville, while you may start out as snow initially, you will then transition to some ice and maybe even some rain before transitioning back to snow late Sunday night into Monday morning. Places like Madisonville, Kentucky, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, Bowling Green, you could stay all rain because you're going to be in that warm nose of air most of the system's duration. Indianapolis, you're going to stay in the low 20s to mid 20s. So you're primarily probably going to stay all snow during this event. But how far that nose of warm air moves will have an impact on the snowfall totals and what type of precipitation, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, or ice that you see on our Sunday. This map here shows, the, again, the weather at 7 o'clock. That low is projected to be near Paducah, Kentucky. We have snow to the north and west, snow to the north, but we do see ice across the lower third of Indiana making its way towards Cincinnati, Lexington, and we see rain and heavy rain at that from Nashville down through Alabama and Mississippi towards New Orleans. Whether this storm remains as a line of storms and our primary threat is only straight line winds, or if these cells develop into discrete uh, cells themselves, we could then have the possibility of rotation and we could have the possibility of an isolated tornado on our Sunday evening. This will take a lot to watch and monitor over the next several days. and We'll bring you the latest details as they become available. And one reason I'm concerned about this is the amount of precipitable water that's available with this particular system. And again, precipitable water is that amount of more, if you squish everything out of the atmosphere, how much precipitation would fall or accumulate from doing that. So where you see those blues, that's indicating at least one inch of precipitable water. So in a classic winter scenario, if we saw an inch of precipitation using a 10 to 1 ratio, we would expect 10 inches of snow in that. And that's why some weather maps and some weather models you may be seeing on social media are showing places across Kentucky at 10, 15, 20 inches of snow. But as I showed you from the other map, we are going to have that warm nose of air making its way north into Kentucky. So that's obviously going to not let the, the precipitation fall as snow, but more as rain. And so we're going to continue to watch this and see how much moisture is available. But in places like Indianapolis and Columbus, Champaign and Effingham, you're in the precipitable water amount of about seven-tenths of an inch. So six, seven, eight inches of snow would seem likely if those ratios hold. Now, with the cold air in place, it might be a little bit fluffier snow. It might be a 12 to 1 ratio or even a 13, 14 to 1 ratio. So a lot of that you know, temperature and all those dynamics will play an impact of what the total snow amount we see with this particular system. So one thing I want to caution about is if we get this line of cell storms to develop 
it could rob moisture from the low pressure system and points north of it. So if we have more severe weather here, it could cause us to have less moisture available across the northern part of the storm. So instead of seeing seven tenths of precipitable water, we may only see five tenths or four tenths. So that would then cut down on our snowfall amounts. Likewise, when we have tightly wrapped systems like this low pressure will be with a tight pressure gradient and strong winds, we can develop a dry slot in these storms. So if a dry slot develops, that will obviously stop the precipitation for a period of time and cut down on your rainfall or your snowfall totals. And we kind of can see this here. So Evansville, you might be in a dry slot where you started out as snow, transitioned to some ice, get into the dry slot, and then you end with some backside snowfall on our early Monday morning. So a lot to be determined. So just because we see the moisture available doesn't mean it's all going to be there. And it's one of the reasons why we have to wait until this system gets on shore before we can really get a better handle on the system. Because when it's still out over the ocean, there's very few sensors, very few uh, temperature observations and uh, atmospheric observations that are taking place. But as it moves on shore, we have a lot of weather sensors and a lot of weather stations that are sampling and taking observations every hour on all elements of the system. They're looking at the 300 millibar, the 500, the 800, the surface level. What is the pressure? Is it rising? How quickly is it rising or lowering? What's going on at all levels? So as that makes its way onto shore, we'll get more and more data points, which will then be fed into those models and which will then give us a more refined uh, solution to where this low is going to track, how far that warm air will rise, and what will be those amounts of snowfall and or rainfall that we would see across the Ohio Valley by the time we get to our Sunday into our Monday. It'll also give us an idea of will there be vorticity, will there be spin in the atmosphere that would, might cause these supercells to become discrete and tornadic as opposed to just a straight line, congealed line of storms. So a lot to be determined over the next few days. So let's take a look at some of the potential models. This is the GFS model. It's bringing the snow into Missouri by Saturday evening into early Sunday morning. By Sunday morning, that snow is spreading into southern Illinois, into southern Indiana by the time we get into our noon hour. S snow is heavy across parts like Indianapolis. We start to see the ice along the Ohio River. All of that moves east. We have wraparound snow ending our Sunday night into Monday. And along the south, we had that strong line of storms making their way through. And we saw in that particular model that some of them were discrete supercells, something to watch. The European model is a little bit slower and a little bit further north with the track of the low pressure. So it brings ice into central Missouri rain further south by our Saturday evening. By the time we get to Sunday, it's spreading ice to places like Carbondale and Marion, Illinois, then into places like Bloomington, Indiana. But keeping snow and heavy at that, where you see the darkest blues, that's one to two inches of snow per hour. But it's bringing that ice line pretty far north into central Indiana. So that's going to be something we got to watch. And then wrapping it around with, with snow on the backside as we get to our Monday. All of this moves out by Monday afternoon. And just like with the American model, we saw those stronger storms across the south and east. In terms of snowfall amounts, this is the European Ensemble, the latest run of it. It's showing, and I don't want you to get caught up on the numbers per se. Um, this is an Ensemble uh, model run, an output from it. And so what the Ensemble does is it takes 51 different models and it takes all the different data points and different mathematical formula and runs them through the computers every six hours and spits out a result. All 51 of those results are then averaged together to give us an ensemble average. And so what this is really used for is to tell us where do we think the heaviest snow, the heaviest rain, the warmest temperatures, the coldest temperatures, where do we think that will set up? And so what this tells us is that we will see the heaviest uh, snowfall across central Illinois, places like Effingham, Champaign, towards Indianapolis, towards Columbus, Ohio, and out towards Pittsburgh. Further south, 
because there's so much variability on how far north that warm air makes it, how much of a dry slot works in, where does the ice set up, which will obviously limit your snowfall amount. We see a sharp snowfall gradient just south of that heavy snow area. So we have good confidence or growing confidence in a heavy snow event somewhere in this area of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. It could move north or south by 50 to 100 miles over the next several model runs. That's why by the time we get to Friday or Saturday, we should have a better idea once that system gets on shore of getting more data, more data points to put into the models, more pinpoint uh, precise snowfall amounts and lows. But again, with any system, we won't know the exact track until it's just a few hours out or you know, 12 hours out from now. So this is gonna be something we're gonna to continue to monitor over the next several days, and we'll adjust our maps up or down as needed to reflect what the latest thinking is. We hope you've enjoyed this weather video. Let us know where you're watching from. If we can answer something about the weather that will impact your area, we will do our best to let you know in the comments or in a future video. Like and subscribe, share this video with your friends, share it on your social media. All you have to do is go to the address bar, copy that link, paste it into a, a new social media post, share it. We would love to see as many people be as informed and get the information they need to make the decisions that will impact their lives uh, over the next several days. So thank you for stopping by. And we hope to see you soon.